We're moving on to rants and we're asking you what do you make of the education minister's comments yesterday after he uh, accused some um, you know, opposition members of being the reason behind the number of people at the Black Star Square and the faintings and all of that. He says that it's just, um, you know, a calculated attempt to mar the efforts being made by the party in power to rectify the issues concerning the CSSPS um, you know, problems. And so let's go on the streets and find out what people are saying about it. Hello and welcome to this morning's edition of the Daily Rant. My name is Eric Ewoji. I was scandalized when I heard the Minister of Education, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, say that some persons who went to the Independence Square were bashed there to go and faint. Now, another member of parliament, that is the member of parliament for Second D, Andrew Ejapa Mesa, joined in that train of thought that people were bashed there to go and faint, ostensibly to make this NPP government unpopular. <laughs> what do you make of these comments. This is the daily rant. Let's keep talking. In fact, to a large extent, I think that this minister has demonstrated a great insensitivity towards the plight of grieving parents who are grieving because of a problem his own ministry has created. This is a system that, for the first time in this country, people who were self placed got to the school and they told them their names were not on the notice board, they should go back. This is a system that have generated people who were in the dining hall eating, and they published names to tell them that they should go back because their names are there. This is a minister whose ministry, centers that have been created at the regional level, they go there, they cannot create a body status for somebody unless a class. They go to the regional center, somebody who was not placed at the school, that he's made a day student. Her parents are not here. They did a documentary at Adyambra. You saw boys and girls staying in the same hostel because they were placed there, they couldn't change them. We have gotten to a stage that these youngsters have gotten to the stadium to queue. And we are told that the collapsing that they are collapsing. We are told that the presence there is that they have bars them because politicians is used to bars people. That if my daughter is not placed, then I go to the stadium to look at it and I collapse. It means that I was given 20 Ghana cities to collapse and the minister has the guts to tell people. All the time we are politicians or pressure, I don't know, want to release tension. But I always say that you need to appreciate the time or you're very necessary. Look, I know people in second Takrade who have to travel with their walls to Accra. You see, so up and the man, I'm why I've affected. The parent in the to Accra three, four days, you know. Oh, the It is for me, as much as I know there, Matthew Poku Prempe is one of the hardworking ministers. But, oh yeah, one more politicization of issues, you know, especially when it comes to serious issues about it. It is because of the importance attached to education in the one major campaign promise was the free SHS. It, if you are going to give me a free SHS, now at the end of the day, I have to sleep in mosquitoes. I have to sleep in the open. You heard some of the school children and their parents saying that if this is all about free SHS, then it's better they pay school fees and have their peace. Master Mewa Fase, Ochusi School be was a St. Manso in the central region. We were told, say, we say, you call back to Cape Coast to go and then do the corrections, which we thought said by going there, because already near a free abroad in Kornieba Honomo, Emua. So we thought said by getting to Cape Coast, you know, it should solve the problem. Yeah, we are then we were told that Cape Coast for no more hormone have no say about the request, you know, say on your vocation, you know, and you know, in Kwakra. But watching TV, any day, you know, and I may say, let's hold on and see how things will unfold and sana. And I thought that the minister should have been measured in how he react to some of these sensitive matter. And then, uh, uh, very sensitive because personally yesterday, look, we were like, this is the boy's future and we need to ask people like Edika, you know, no. So for the minister to make that statement say, the people were buzzed. Just So just imagine this morning, they could do one man come back and say we were also buzzed. Ha! This man, no, no, no. That, that doesn't make sense. I did not remember surprise when I saw the member of parliament of Sekendi collaborating the fact that Minister Nu and him belongs to one platform. What's that platform? Uh, What's platform? No, although two are there. Or be a catcher in there. Somebody sent it. Not that one will. The lawyers will say there's no premier facet case. One will be to SKU. Or be not send a platform there. Oh, they were bashed there. So based on that, Minister, you yourself 
knows that your people are coming out to say that some of the problems that are coming are as a result of a technology that needed to do a test run that they didn't do properly. That has created that. You know very well that technology now anchor or your papa, everybody would have gotten his school or her school without going, without going, going there to Accra. You should know that when a man holds a pregnant goat in the market for sale, there's a pregnant problem at home. So why do you then think that them papa no or your irresponsible or overturn? And that is why I feel that the minister got it wrong. This is somebody fainting. And it's the first time I am told that you can fake to faint. He initially agreed that he doesn't have the facts to suggest the people were bass. But he has also no cause to doubt Honorable Matthew Opoku Rempe Nasama Orekano because probably he may be privy to certain uh, detailed information on only. But people change when they put on political uh, lens and attack. Uh, one of parliament were a position of uh, a, a whip. You must be whipped to, to the party's line. Who are you to say that uh, this is what the minister, who is a colleague, party member, why can't he, you go out there to say the no, and see what I'm saying is there. Let all but but if that happens, then you are not a man of yourself. Oh, no. That because I have a colleague in parliament, and he said, As some other can say, Eric, let us be sincere, let us be sincere, let us be honest with ourselves. If it had been NDC, Penin, no, so cocker the massa mia, private conversation. Oh, one uh, of the one can hear, bra. But when you are on air and your party members are watching you, it becomes difficult for you to say that no, this one. Day. How many times do you hear this thing? What I'm saying is that they are politicians, and at times they need to uh, protect and defend their party. For the MP, any statement to make here this morning, idiot. Mimi Huni said he was just being political, as in he was simply protecting the colleague now, Asama Okai, you know. Which I was expecting to say, yeah, lawyer idiot. And Kesanka, going by what lawyers do, evidence. See, you're making a case, say, people were bust. Some people were, Some people were bust. bust. First of all, you should be able to tell us, ABI, by your intelligence, you who say, Nipa X, Y, Z, Omu Yen Krofwa, Omu people who were students that are yet to be placed, Omu Yen Krofwa, most school that that. And on mobile, yes, how they way until we know by their faces they are people from places that have been bars to the area. That we could have then said, okay, fine, maybe they have a case there. But Papa, on a more serious note, there was something happening with our education that we should be careful. It's a challenge that came with free SHS, but we need to find a way to fix it. And they say, we are now taking everything power from the local level back to Accra. Now, every single decision about education has to be taken from Accra to the extent, say, Impo. Say Obi Abahana say yet changes in where the person go to school are. It was so quite a cry and sana. And when the man you can go for a cry no. So the bigger problem is how we are taking back the power from the headmaster, the rural schools, back into the people in Accra. Which I'm sure that the minister is aware because yeah. it is no, this software aware. that has yeah. brought us no, to no, where yeah. we are. So uh, how then do you say that uh, the people, people were bad? You know, you, you know, you know, you know, they are aware. They are aware because. We had the opportunity to speak to some headmasters in the various schools. They told us point blank that as we speak, even in Miyane Edema School from Omudiri or Honomonoho, somebody has... Have a say. You, know, you see, as we speak, accountants from here, accountants from school, they don't account for anything. Because at Miyane and Kuranbe, you know, somebody sits in the, at the regional office or somewhere else, and then go and give them the food. Oba no kuta, list, you know, Akacho say, in Miyane, where we're going to go, accountant doesn't know how much he bought each unit. Omunimoshi. Basically or practically, what has happened is that they've taken every single power. Those who are at the school's level, no, and you know, back to a crowd. The most annoying thing is that, is it, Eric, Elfie, the hard work of some of these headmasters have made those schools that people are queuing to go today very attractive. There are headmasters. At the time, they assume power of their schools. The schools were low-grade schools. Because of their leadership style, people are not queuing to go to those schools. Then you come to come to say that, after all, that headmistress seated there will do admissions and get compromised. And let us make it very clear that party loyalists go to insult them. They go to tell them that, change my child, they say I can't change. They go to Accra and come and show them that SSS, I'm out. So you will turn the headmaster, the headmistress, 
to somebody a laughing stock. You put a board, a board in charge of a school. The board chairman's son cannot come to that school unless the headmaster asks permission from Accra. And we think that we are running an educational system that should be laughed. And people, instead of people to sit and advise people, you are working on the emotional keyboards for people by telling them that they fake. They fake them to collapse and they fake them to, to laugh and they fake them to go to Accra. And I think that is most unfortunate. CSSPS has been here, not today. We were not seeing this. Why is it that this time around we are seeing it? It should tell you that we are doing something that is accounting for this, which is we taking everything power, decisions that the schools were supposed to be making. We have taken everything back to the people in Accra. So as we speak, let any headmaster open his mouth to say that you did this which is not wrong, which is not right. <laughs> that person will be victimized and charged. Don't, don't, don't you know that Agri Memorial so headmaster. headmaster will be the victimized in a way that you can't speak, which is the challenge now. So I was surprised that the minister said that the people they are seeing in Accra were people who were bust. He forgot that he has created a system that demands that every single student who had problems with his education admission must go to Accra. And how many people do we have in this country? How many students completed BEC last year or this year that were supposed to go there? The annoying thing is that a problem you have created that they join you turn bus or STC to Accra and somebody will have to bus them to the stadium. It's most unfortunate. But Eric, yeah, <laughs> Let's also look at this system of when any government comes to power, he wants to change everything within the educational system to suit on the policy. You see, this morning, people were trying to justify the changing of the uh, uh, software uh, that uh, there was an attempt to... Uh, Somebody hacked it, so they had to change you, the system. You, you, you see, what's our, what's for Christ's this? sake, Eric, for Christ's sake, our politicians should spare us some of this uh, headache. Your brother, though. So when you come to add, uh, what's working then? <laughs> it's all to injury. If I'm at Sefi Yosu and I have problems with my admission that I want to change, I have to come from Sefi Yosu to Accra. How many students are you expecting? And Kuladu does in Accra. I was even surprised that the numbers we saw there were even limited. It's because, look, imagine the number of people who have issues with the admission every year. No, no, but now all of them have to come to Accra. Eric, Eric, you know Eric, that a lot Eric, of them are seated home. Yeah. They don't want, they've seen the pictures yeah, yeah, and they don't want to go to Accra. Yeah, but yesterday. you see, Eric, what what you saw, what, to Eric, as we talk to you now, talk to all the secondary schools. They've not gotten their required number of students who are to enter there. Mm. The computer has placed people who are not ready to go there. Those who want to go there are not able to go there. This whole placement thing is a deliberate attempt to collapse private schools. That you, you have somebody spend so much attend private school and at the end of the day you place him to a, a, a school that he comes quarreling with school authorities. That school fees are meet to word them that. Then you see somebody would aggregate 32, 35 and comfortable place because there is 30% placement preference to public school students. And I think that we don't run a nation that the taxes between a private person and a public person are the same. Then you turn around and do this to people. And I think that it's most unfortunate. Mm -hmm.